Down to what you know words need to be said. Just look at it. Can you hear the water? Thumbs up. Sunset over Quantico. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Fort Belvoir. Fort Belvoir. My bad, sorry. If it wasn't so nippy, I would go down there a little closer, but it's nippy. No, that's Fort Belvoir. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's Fort Belvoir. That's not Quantico. Wait a minute. Mount Vernon. That's for Belvoir, uh, Gary. That's Mount Vernon. Parkway is over that side. That's for Belvoir. Remember now, I'm at Marshall Hall. Hey, Lisa. One of the things I miss about Maryland is coming down here and just doing what I'm doing. Look at that. I should have gone down uh, Captain Billy's. That's where I should have gone. Right, if you run the Indian hit side, that would be Quantico, right? But I'm over by Marshall Hall, so that would be Fort Belvoir.
Too nice. <laughs> too nice, too nice. Need to hurry and warm up. Hey, LaShawn and Gary and Rusty, Lisa, Diane, Veronica, Chico, Bruce. Danielle, Anthony, Chuck, Coach T, who else? Justice, Wally, who else just said beautiful? Marvin, LaShawn, Maria, down here at Marshall Hall, just sitting down here by the banks of the river. Watching the sunset. Just watching the sunset. Yeah, got a lot to think about, Gary. A lot of good things are happening, and it's just a good place to reflect. What's up, Trey? What's up, Bobby? Just wish it was a little warmer. I've been over there on the pier. But it is nippy. And I'm about to turn the heat on. And the sun is set. So that's my picture. I wish. Two grumpy old men fussing. Two grumpy old men fussing. Why? Why? This probably be a peaceful place. Shut up. Bright ass. I'm sorry. Bright orange. Who got a bright orange truck like that? Yep, sitting on the dock of the bay, watching the tides roll away. That ain't happening. <laughs> that ain't happening. But just in here watching the sunset. If I need to take a picture of that, because y'all are messed up. Should have went live. I was trying to get some pictures. I thought I would share that with y'all. I wish I could zoom in some. See that? I don't know if y'all can see it, but uh, we're not focus. Oh, come on. See those little, little lines? Those are chemtrails. That means they're putting chemicals in the air. See those little lines? Those are called chemtrail. Like a chemical, but a chemtrail. So when y'all see the lines like that, that's not planes releasing jet fuel. That's actually, it's called chemtrail. 
Google it, y'all be surprised. I know if anybody's heard about it, let me know. It's called Chemtrail. Whenever you see the lines in the sky like that, where they go? See them right there, two little lines? They're like right, right in my finger. Of course, you know, it's not going to come clear, but it's called Chemtrail. That means that they are releasing chemicals in the air and the atmosphere. Okay, well, guess what? It's a little cold. And I am going to turn it to this way. So what is up, everybody? On a little spring break from the show. It's, um, I have to stop my phone. Let me make sure I say it right. Um, hold on. Make sure I give you a correct spell of it. Hold on, Bobby. Kim Trail. According to Wikipedia, the Kim Trail conspiracy theory is the false claim that long lasting okay, condensation push. trails. Kim Trail. The chemtrail conspiracy theory is the false claim that long-lasting condensation trails, called chemtrails by proponents, consist of chemical or biological agents left in the sky by high-flying aircraft and deliberately sprayed for purposes undisclosed to the general public. Dear Axel for all that, this is what is, this is how it's spelled, hold on. Bobby, we had this conversation a couple years ago. No S one, hold on. There we go. Y'all check that out. <laughs> well, actually, my um, the owner of the station does have young kids, so they took them on spring break in North Carolina. So we will resume next week. But check out the word Kim Trail. What's up, Robert? And you will be surprised at what you read. It's called a chemtrail conspiracy. And um, it will definitely get you thinking about every time you see the, um, the planes in the air and you see the, the streaks. Because um, we met this guy years ago. And he said he works for the EPA. And that was his job was to um, do a study on that. And if you look at the D.C. area, it has the highest rate for allergies. And if you notice through certain times of the year, you see number of streaks and you think it's the plane. They're releasing chemicals. It's called you to have allergies cause you to have all types of stuff but what I need y'all to do is share because some people just might need to see the sunset but I need you to go on my page support a sister and I will gladly appreciate it uh, I have two books that are out what's up Lance two books that are out first book from employee to entrepreneur, the journey of empowerment book will be out in August. Pre-sales are going on now until May 31st, I believe it is. So that the books will come to me, I sign them. Second book that is out is I Am a Survivor. That book will be out in September. Pre-sales started actually today, but my pre-sale started two days ago. So, support a sister. Um, just, you know, support your home girl. And, um, I'm just excited. Talk show. Two books coming out. Some speaking engagements are coming up. 
I'm just saying. So if anybody want to talk about something, let's let's wrap a tape. <laughs> let's talk. What has been going on with everybody, Michelle Bassani? What is going on? Life is such. Ooh, that's all I can say. It's just so much has been happening that it's really unbelievable. Mere words cannot express what's going on in my life. I can't. I'm just not going to respond to that. I'm just going to like that, Bobby, and keep it moving. Because that would be a best milk seller. I'm just trying to tell you. But, um, I, I, how can I say it? I'm going to give a tip. A, one or two tips. Because I had a conversation with somebody today. I need to know what is everybody's purpose. What is it that you really like to do? And I need you to look back on it. Where you at, Tammy? Really need you to look on it. And look deep into what you like to do. Because whatever you're good at, you let your you have your you you let your purpose make you profit. Whatever you love to do. Ah, El Boogie. I need to talk to you. Hey, Tan. Tammy. <laughs> oh, Tammy. El Boogie, I need to talk to you. Bobby. <laughs> Tammy. Okay. Anyway, I need you to Well, let's do this, Tammy. Let's do it. I need y'all to to look go back to when you was a kid. I talked about this before. Go back to when you was a kid. What did you want to do when you when when you wanted to grow up? Check and see. Shut up, Bobby. Yes, El Boogie, I'm in the DMV. Been here uh, since last Friday. Take care of some business, family, definitely family, and taking care of just some business, setting up some meets and stuff like that. Hanging out with some friends a little bit, you know, running into some folks. But check back into what your child, what your child, what did you want to do? And start seeing if you're, what you're doing is making you happy. You know what I'm saying? Some people just do businesses just to make a dollar. Some people actually are in a business, in a, in a job to just make the money. Are you happy? Most likely some would tell you, yes, they're happy with what they do because they love what they're doing. Tawana, some people just say they're doing it just they have to do it. Well, how about you just find out what makes you happy and start making some money? Bobby, you didn't try hard enough. You didn't try hard enough. You just went hitting the right places. And um, I believe if you had two jugs of milk on you, might have might have gotten the coinage. I'm just saying. But I'm trying to be really serious. But you, you didn't have the right type of milk. You only had half percent. She had a head full, full milk on you. But definitely tap into what you love to do. I never thought that I would, one, have my own show. And then now be an author of two books. 
not in my wildest imagination or dreams. I always saw it, but I never thought that I would actually step into it. And that comes again by putting this around the right people. And being around the right people and then actually stepping out on faith and doing it. Or stepping out into the water and believing that you can do it. Um, when I tell you that this has been a fantastic ride, that now I actually have a legacy that's left. P-I-M-P, baby. P-I-M-P. But what's up, Cherokee, girl? You know I've been missing you, girl. I'll be seeing you back next week. I hear Maryland taking care of some business and, and whatnot. But have you just thought about what you really wanted to do? And are you really doing it? And are you happy doing it? And is it making you some coinage? Everybody has a story. It, just like with Cherokee. Cherokee's a DJ. But she has a story behind that. I'm just saying. Tammy is a hairdresser. But it took you a lot to get there. You understand what I'm saying? People need to know that, oh, I'm going to be a DJ. Bam. That's it. No. You got to you got to brand yourself. You got to make a name for yourself. Tammy, you do you have a salon and stuff. You just didn't get it, but you had to work for it. Do you understand what I'm saying? El Boogie, you in the radio industry. Tell your story of how you got to that point. It just didn't happen. Now some people does look up. And they do have it. What's up, Derek? Bobby, you're going to make me hurt you. But you all know what I'm talking about. People need to hear your story. They see you up here, but they need to know the journey that you took to get where you at. Are we telling our story? That's what I'm trying to get everybody to do. What's up, Aaron? Tell the story how you did it. Tell the struggles that you went through to get to where you at. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. But I never thought that I would be. But I got a great support team. And it's not. Some is a couple of my family. But it's really outside people. I can't with Bobby right now. Can I block Bobby for a minute, y'all? Can I block? Can I block Bobby? This is some real talk. Real talk. Y'all pay Bobby no mind, cause if Bobby want me to tell what happened to the two, why he keep talking about seven left milk and some cookies, it won't be good. <laughs> cause he he talk about this one more time, and I'm gonna tell everybody what happened. Keep running your mouth, Bobby. <laughs> but now on the real talk though, um, what's up, Richard? Are you living your full potential? Are you living your dream, you know, are you living in, in your purpose? Are you moving in your purpose? Are you doing the things that actually make you happy? Are you dropping seeds into, oh, 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 now you want to be quiet? Oh. If y'all say y'all should be quiet real quick and not tell what happened. If y'all want me to tell what happened. Send me some, give me some thumbs up if y'all want me to tell what Bobby is talking about. Oh, now he wants to be quiet. Anybody want to know what happened? Anybody want to know what happened? Uh-oh, got one. Give me, give me, give me one more. Anybody, anybody really want to know what happened to Bobby? Why he keeps talking about milk and 7-Eleven? Give me two more. I got, give me two more thumbs and a heart. And I'm going to tell y'all what happened. I need one more. I need two two thumbs up and a heart. And I'm going to tell y'all what happened. <laughs> Richard, you got to go back and see. Bobby want to run his mouth a little bit. And I'm trying to talk some serious stuff. <laughs> and Bobby now wants to be shh. <laughs> oh, but now you want nobody to know about the hard part of your life. 
No, but on a real tip though, are you following your dream? Are you following the passion that you have burning inside? Are you living your dream? A lot of times the answer is no. A lot of times it's fear. A lot of times it's family. What's up, Kim? A lot of times it's us. When you hear, oh, you don't need to be doing it. This don't make no sense. You know, you need to be doing this. You need to be doing that. Why don't you try this? Why don't you try that? And then after a while, you start to believe it. So, my suggestion is to all of y'all. Get a good mentor. Be, surround yourself by folks that are doing the same thing. Tapping into their purpose. Tapping into what they're supposed to be doing. Um, like I said, I never thought that I would be have my own radio show. Be an author of not one book, but two. God is good. And I've placed myself around some really, really good people. But I need y'all to share this because the sunset earlier was just so, 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 so beautiful. And all things are made possible. You just have to believe. And you just definitely have to just trust and believe in yourself. That's what it really comes down to. Trust and believe in yourself. Because there will be people that will trust in you and believe in you. But if you don't believe in yourself and you don't trust yourself, it's not going to matter. You'll just hear it. But once you see it for yourself and believe it, there's nothing. There's nothing stopping me now. I could care less about who don't like it, who don't believe in it, who don't see it. But what I need y'all to do is, one, share. Second, I need y'all to buy and support me on both of my books. First book, From Employee to Entrepreneur, what's up, Robert? The Journey to Empowerment. The second book is I'm a Survivor. And on the I'm the Survivor, the first book is 22 um, women that's telling their story of how they uh, went from employee to entrepreneur, part-time or full-time, but they told their story. Um, the second book is I'm a Survivor. And I'm talking about, um, the topics I'm talking about in chapters, it's going to be emotional abuse, domestic violence, bullying, suicide, and depression and anxiety. And people don't realize how all that works out. What's up, Larry? And uh, I think I saw Tony on it earlier. People don't realize. But you can go to my page. And I'll uh, do the links later on. But need your support a sister. First two books. Young, I'm just telling you. First one sold out. Well, um, first 20 books, If um, for the first book, you get your name in the book. On my second book, you can also do that too. So the first 20 to buy is to purchase the uh, I'm Survivor will um, have the name in the book. So appreciate the thank you to the ones, the first, the ones that bought the first uh, purchase, the first book, your name is going to be in it. For the I'm a Survivor, I'm doing the same thing. Any pre-sale books will come to me. I autograph the books um, or and mail them out. Depends on where you are. But for everybody that's in Maryland, I bring the books home. And then I'm also doing a, a book tour too. So we don't know exactly where the, the main launch will be. But I will come home and do a book signing. But I'm a radio personality and an author. So I'm excited. I never thought now it's starting to get dark. I never thought that that would happen in a million years. I 
just never thought. I always wanted to write a book, but people understand how important it is to collaborate, especially when you get with the right people. When you collaborate with somebody, you don't have to put as much work because they already have everything laid out. You pretty much are just telling your story. What's up, Smitty? You're telling your story, and then you don't understand how many people are reading. So say, for instance, um, Tammy has 2,500 people that follows her. She, she That follows her, period. Um, Bobby has 5,000. Smitty has 6,500 people. Terry has uh, 2,500. I have 500. Now, we all collaborated in a book, but everybody has had low, uh, whatever number. Look how many more people now has read your story. Now, out of all of those people, you never know who reads your story and might say, Terry, I need you. Um, we're having a seminar, and I would love for you to come. I read your story. Um, I bought the book, but I was really moved by your story. Could you come and speak? We'll pay you. So you're getting your pre-sales from your book. Your book is selling. You Now you have a, a speaking engagement. What's up, Lisa? And then now you sell your books at the event afterwards. And if you also have a good planner, people love to have those 60 to 90 day planners or journal books. Look, how, look, look what you just did. And all you did was promote your book, told your story, got a speaking engagement, selling your book. It's already laid out. People need to hear our stories. We, it's too many people that are silent. Terry, I have a second book that's out. My, um, I'm a survivor book is, is coming out. So, too many people are silent and not telling their story. Well, I'm no longer going to be silent. I'm going to tell my story. And I hope and I pray that um, from reading my story, from being an entrepreneur, from employee to entrepreneur, would definitely make a difference. Um, still going through the bullying stage. Um, dealt with domestic violence. Um, definitely dealt with anxiety and depression. And definitely thought had thoughts of suicide. I can give you a prime example. And this is going to be in my story. But I'm going to tell it to you. People gone. Let me show y'all something. Okay, so I'm sitting right here. I had parked my bike right here one day. And I had sat at the end of the pier. No lie. I've gone through so much stuff. And there was a guy sitting right where I'm sitting at. I parked my bike right, right there. And I sat probably, probably about the third when I sat right there. And I was going through so much stuff through, through the divorce. This is no lie. Sat through so much, so much. Going through the divorce. Um, going through hell with the bike community. Family wasn't supporting me through the divorce. It was just a lot, a lot of pressure. And so much stuff that was going on. Uh, one thing they told us, and Bob and them can tell, and all the bike riders, hey, Renee, one thing that they told us to never do is to, um, wait a minute, hold on. One thing they always told us not to do is get on a bike with your mind messed up because you have to keep your mind clear and focused. Got into it with my mom. So I decided to get on the bike. What's up, Brian? I decided to go up to the harbor, me up to uh, FedEx Field. And I did my personal best on the bike. I was like, you know, you know what?
you ain't find no damn going chicken or no no coleslaw, Renee. So you know what? Uh, anyway, but back to my story. Two books, Renee. Two books. Two books. Two books. Two books. Two books. Um, rode up to the rode up to FedEx Field. Did my personal best and everything. Sat there. Wrote, it, wrote out something to everybody. Tell everybody, you know, thank y'all for being there for me. What's up, Sleepy? Thank y'all for being there for me. I appreciate everything, but I, I can't do it no more. And I sent it. And, um, wait a minute. I think I'm losing power. Hold on. Okay, that's at 100%. Okay. And I was like, forget it. I, I can't do it no more. I can't do it no more. Came on down, got into an argument with the guy at FedEx Field. Came on down to um, BJ Carryout. Got me a uh, ham and egg and a pie drink and everything. My mind was, was, was somewhere else. Came on down to Marshall Hall, like I said. Car sitting right here. Parked my bike at the end of the pier. Sat down at the pier. Unlocked my phone and started taking pictures. And I kept looking at the bike and looking at the guy like, gosh, I wish this guy would leave. I decided that I wonder if I would ride my bike off into the water. Who would care? Because when I tell you I was going through so much pressure with the divorce. So much bull crap with the bike community. So much bull crap with the family. Lost everything. Lost everything. So I unlocked the phone, took some pictures, set the phone down on, on the pier, and I said, you know what? I don't care if the guy's there. He'll tell me where, if I ride off into the water, he'll tell me where it's at. I, start, I got up, and I took one step, and I heard a pop. And God showed me my funeral. What's up, Bishop? And he showed me my funeral. And I was laying in the casket. Laying, just how, however they do it. They put you in position. I was laying there. And I saw the place was packed. I saw, at that time when I was married, my mother and my husband greeting folks. There were people that know me from Toast. They know me from Net, Limwu. They knew me as Cinnabon. They knew me as Jewel. And those folks came up and said to my mother and my husband, this is what Lynette has done for me or Net or Toast or whatever. And both of them said, that's the type of person she was. When I tell you that I sat up out that casket, and I said, oh, hell no. Neither one of those mofos know who I am or anything about me. Now, I just heard two weeks or a week prior to that, somebody dogged me out. And I'm listening on three-way that they're glad that my husband left. I was going to be broke, busted, disgusted, not going to be able to get my hair done, not going to be able to sell the green shit. That's the drink I was making. I'm not going to be able to do tons of stuff for like a whole like hour listening to them talk bad about me. They, this is before we went from MySpace to Facebook. And I listened to this man talk about me so bad that I told God that from now on, me, myself, and I will give you the highest praise. I could care less what my mother thinks, what my husband thinks, what the so-called friends think, what the bike community thinks. I just don't, excuse me, but I just don't give a damn. I don't care anymore. And from that moment, I lived. And I, when I tell you I heard God's voice that deep, I decided to, to live 
and not give everybody that pleasure and not give my family satisfaction for y'all to come up to them and tell them some stories about me and they say that's what type of person she was and you don't know nothing about me. That's going to be one of the parts of, in, in, my, in my book. That when you hear God's voice and you can be a witness and tell the story. What's up, Diddy? Because you know I ain't going to butcher your name up. <laughs> but when you can tell somebody, there's so many of y'all got so many stories and you do not want to share it. You don't know what that could be doing to somebody's life. And I'm not in the bike community anymore. What's that, Emo? I need to talk to you. Y'all have no idea. What's up, Audrey? Y'all have no idea what I've been through to where I'm at now. Y'all have no idea. I'm supposed to be dead, y'all. I am supposed to be, be honest with you, they probably would have found me. I'm supposed to be somewhere in the Potomac. Like I said, my I had parked my bike right there, right at right, right in the center. I was sitting right there, and there was a guy sitting right where my car is parked at. And I was going to end it. Didn't care. Everything was gone. And I don't have no shame with that. We need to start telling our stories and stop worrying about our reputation, our little egos, our little pride. Because we there's people that's hurting. Somebody told me today that I am so passionate about bullying. I am 50 years old and I am still getting bullied. At, bullied. And that bully don't mean somebody, you know, like the kids are being bullied when people are dogging you out, talking about you, slandering your name. That's bullying. And all you ever tried, and I'm saying that I'm perfect, nor do I ever try to be perfect. And I didn't mean for this to go that route, but people don't understand it. That it's not just kids, like I said on the show, it's not just kids that are taking their lives. There are adults that are doing it. There are adults that are taking it that they can't stand the pressure. But I'm going to tell you like this. This is one chick. This, what's up, Rasheed, Miss Wanda? Miss Juan, I know you busy, girl, up there saving lives and, and, and getting people well, so I'm not even... Girl, you know, I know that your schedule is, is, is hectic. But there are people that are literally taking their lives or thinking about it because they have no one to talk to. Their, their voice is being silent. But yet you still got people and y'all know who the people are. And just like Sarah Jake said, if you call yourself my friend, if you call yourself an associate or, or something, you don't let nobody talk about your person that you call your road dog, your homie. You don't you don't do that. You don't you don't do that. But people are doing it. And they thinking that they're yeah, you know, yeah, you know. No. People are literally taking their lives. What's up, Jeff? Because that's the only way. They're self-medicating themselves. They're, 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 they're being self-destructive because they have no one to talk to. If I were to cut myself, I'll bleed. If I cut you, you're bleeding. If I pinch myself, I'm going to say, ouch. If I pinch you, you're going to say, ouch. Some people around here try to be so, so macho and so hard that y'all don't know what y'all are doing to people. 
This is not a game. And then you got people that think on a daily basis with their on a daily basis with their job. People are being bullied on their job. They being bullied when they just in in their house. And then you got the domestic violence. It doesn't matter verbally, physically. Stuff is happening. And all we want to do is do this, but then do this and 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 look and see. Y'all, this is crazy. People are hurting. And you quickly want to use the word, you quickly want to say, oh, mental abuse and the whole nine, you know, mental issues and stuff like that. You wonder why some people are going crazy. You wonder why some folks are not handling it. You know, it's, it's not easy. We have 10 women that are telling their story on this I, I'm a Survivor book. One of them is in hiding. Um, she's she's in protect, she's protecting, so she's not going to show her picture. And I pray that with, that with her telling her story, that she will be able to be, what's up, Leonard? That she will be able to, to feel free to, to come out and no longer be in hiding. Um, there could be some other topics that um, I could be talking about. But I'm going to drop some nuggets in on that. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, when you tell your story and people don't believe you. Um, let me explain something to y'all. I'm telling my story and I'm writing a book. Yes. I'm going to sell my book. I'm, I'm going to make some money from it. But what I want to get from this book is somebody that tells me that they're not afraid anymore. Um, what's up, Chauncey? I, I want somebody. I, it's amazing when you, when you do something and somebody calls you or inboxes you. And I need y'all to share this. And they say, I'm so proud of you. I didn't know that you had that in you. But what you said has changed my life. I, I, I'm no longer afraid. I'm going to go ahead and write that book because I got a, a lot that I've been writing. I'm going to go ahead and start that business. I'm going to reevaluate or think what I need to do. Um, that is so powerful to me. That does something to my heart. Let me know that I'm doing something right. Um, it's not selfish. I'm trying to be. What's up, Rick? I'm trying to be as as as. Um, what's up, Nikki? I'm trying to be as much transparent that you feel comfortable of talking about it. But with the bullying, hey, Miss Pat. But with the bullying, I'm, I'm taking that real serious because when I tell you, I'm doing good, I'm doing good, monk. When I tell you the degree of the damage from being, and I'm not afraid to talk about it, in the bike world, to where I lost my marriage. I lost my house. I lost my dignity. I lost well not dignity, it was dignity, my identity. I lost respect for myself. I got so consumed that I even lost my sense for business. Um I basically lost a lot. when I mean family I have some cousins that I don't even speak to. They can stand right next to me and I won't speak to them because they made a decision to choose. I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I made a lot of mistakes. I've trusted too many people. But what I refuse to do now 
is allow people to keep me hostage. When you sit there and you talk about somebody and then you whisper down the lane and then that lie turns out to be and you don't have the guts enough to do it, that's bullying when you bully people. When you have people to fear they can't do. You got family members that do the same thing. That tell you that you're not this, you're not that. You're doing this, you're doing that. That's bullying. There's different levels of bullying. The bullying that they only want you to focus on is when you're turning and pointing and pushing kids and you're doing that. Well, how about the adults? We always talk about the kids, but what about the adults? I had adults on my show that were talking about their kids, and then they were talking about how they were being bullied, or they were the bullier. What's that, Reese? When, it, when is it going to stop? And y'all know the people that are doing it. But then you punk out or be weak and then don't tell. So now we got to guess and wonder and blame the wrong people or now look suspicious. I got to a point where I trusted nobody. 